Morning. Today is the first instalment of our Meet the Expert series. Um, we are heading up to Powder Tech in Corby uh, to learn about uh, the processes of powder coating and specifically pre-treatment. Um, as usual, I'm running late, so I'd better get a wriggle on. Meet the Expert, episode one, Powder Tech. Rich, thanks for joining us today for this first of the Meet the Expert. Pre-treatment, what is it? Well, pre-treatment is, in our world, a, the preparation for powder coating. We're taking the aluminium or the galvanised steel from its delivered state, which might be a little bit greasy, it might have contaminants on it, and we're removing all of those ready for powder coating. That's half of the job, is to clean it. The other half is to protect it from corrosion, which is a conversion process, which is called titanium zirconium, or our other one for galvanised is called silane. That process essentially seals the metal from corrosion and promotes the adhesion. Underlying all that, there's also an etching stage, which micro etches the surface, which if you think of it as the powder grabbing on and holding onto the aluminium or the galvanised steel, it doesn't seem like a lot of etching, but it really does, down at a microscopic scale, it really makes a, a, a huge, huge difference to what comes later on in the process. Pre-treatment sounds pretty chemically, how environmentally friendly actually is it? It is a chemically process, you're right, uh, and also a lot of water rinses. It is very environmentally friendly. This supersedes uh, chrome conversion systems, which was Chrome 6, as I know we've talked about in the past, which is extremely environmentally unfriendly and will eventually be banned. Titanium zirconium does not have the same environmental impact on uh, either the processing uh, in terms of uh, health and safety, nor in terms of uh, post-processing in terms of disposal. Uh, the local water company, Anglin Water, they're extremely uh, happy that we've converted this because that vastly reduces the impact of our process on the environment. And essentially now, what we get rid of is clean water. Seems to me that pre-treatment's really important. What happens if you don't do it? There's two things that will happen. One, you won't be etching it, so you won't be creating that adhesive surface. The second thing is you won't be converting the surface to reduce the corrosion. So you'll powder coat and you'll have what looks like a nice finish but there'll be no stopping of corrosion should it be cut and once that happens there'll be, be nothing to stop the powder just literally peeling off and so it'll be a wholesale disaster. You might not notice it for a month, two months, possibly even a year, but once that gets breached the powder will literally come off in sheets. What you have to remember with powder coating, it is not waterproof, it is porous, so you, water can get through and unless you've got that pre-treatment that we've talked about then the water will get through it cause, cause like a little battery cell and start to corrode the whole panel after pre-treatment what would be the next step do you just dry it yeah they're dried obviously because when we're powder coating we want to powder coat onto a clean dry surface. So after the panels have come out of the dryer, they're obviously about to be powder coated. What is powder coating? After pre-treatment, it is hung on the bars and then dried, and then those bars then continue round into the powder coating booth. How exactly is the powder applied to the substrate? Well, the first thing to realise is that powder coating, strange enough, is a powder. It looks, uh, feels like flour. So if you can imagine that, it's, it's air, but you can't literally throw flour at a panel. Uh, it'll be very lumpy, so it is fluidised and becomes very, very fine and full of air, and that's passed over a, um, a, an electrical wire, effectively, which imparts a static electrical charge on it. So then that's all done through a gun, it looks like a gun, and when you pull it, the powder goes over the static uh, tip, out through the gun, is propelled, and propelled towards the material. This is all done inside um, an evacuated booth. Basically the booth is sucking the powder 
all the time so there's nothing gets out in you know so we don't fill the factory with uh, powder once as it's traveling across the between the gun and the metal the metal is earthed and the powder is positively charged and that static electricity or that static charge attracts the powder to the metal it's a bit like and if if you, if you remember using a comb, when you combed your hair and uh, in a, on a summer's day and then put the hair against the comb, your hair would rise up and stick. And it's exactly that, but on a, an, an industrial scale. So the powder sticks. And what, what it does, it, it forms a very even film over the uh, metal. So that's another really great thing about the, the way that powder is attracted to metal. It's very even and very consistent. And that static electricity holds it long enough to take it on to the next curing stage. Just got back from a really, really interesting day at Powder Tech. Uh, I've learned so much today and come away with a whole ton of sample swatches for you guys. Uh, so if anybody does need samples, please do give us a call. We are more than happy to send them out. They really are good and really, really useful. Um, I hope that first installment was interesting. Uh, the next one coming up, uh, we'll be focusing on the materials that uh, PowderTech prefer to use and the materials that we work with and uh, what types of finishes are actually available for them. So do tune in and uh, hopefully we'll catch you for the next one. Cheers, bye.